Hey guys, the name is Jasper, and welcome back to another Maria Clara Tibad After Show. Episode 2 na ngayon, and sa mga nagtataka at nagtatalong kung ano nga ba ang Maria Clara Tibad After Show, well basically, this is the show where I'm going to reply to your comments from episodes 21 to 25. So if you left a comment there, there's a 90% chance that I'm going to reply to them. Here in video form. Um, this is my way to communicate uh, to communicate with you guys because I don't have a lot of time to reply to your comments one by one. Na kailangan ko type, so I think it will be easier for me, and it will be more personal if I read your comments and mga reply ako here in video form. So let's just start with episode twenty one na Maneklara de Bara, and you guys left several comments. And yeah, I'm just going. I'm not going to read all of the comments, but I cherry pick ko lang yung mga kaya ko pasahin. At uh, kung naintindihan ko yung mga comments yung actually, uh, isa ako ano eh, slow ako eh, super slow kung tao. Minsan kailangan pasahin yung comment um, twice, thrice para lang maintindihan ko. Ganun ako, may problema yata ako sa pag-iisip, pero ganun ako mag- ganun ako mag-isip. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm dyslexic and dyslexia, yeah, but parang dyslexic, parang something like that. But I don't know. Mababa siguro ang reading comprehension ko. Okay. So let's just start with episode 21. Isinulat ni Joko Crunch. Hindi po si Crispin ang ililibing related ata kay Mang Adong. Yep, na-confirm nga um, on the on episode 22 na kamag-anak nga ni Mang Adong yun nasa kabaw. Akala ko yun ang bangkay ni Crispin. Kasi biglang nagpakita si Sisa, di ba? Isunod naman ni Jessica Maika Kua, uh, Kuahano. Hindi po si Crispin ang nasa funeral. Yep, na-confirm na nga yun. At sabi din ni Radvin na hindi po, um, hindi po funeral ni Crispin yun. Yep, um, thank you for uh, for replying that. Um, okay, sabi ni Mark Kevin Balanay. Ako lang ba? Yung sinabi ni Professor na hindi lang si Clay ang makakarinig ng kampana at may ibang taga-mundo rin. Okay? That only means na hindi lang si Clay ang nakapasok sa libro. Ano yun? Ano yun? Mga tao sa ibang dimension multiverse, ha? Hey, actually, um, since maybe um, the first week of Mare Clara de Bara, you know, pinag-iisipan na natin we are already theorizing whether there's another set of people Actually, puto rin ko nang dito. May background music dapat to eh. Um, na there were supposed to be like other people from, from the modern generation na nak- nakapunta na sa no limit na rin ng mundo. Tin-theorize ng mga tao na si Clay lang hindi. Ang hindi na yung unang tao na na-teleport dito. Pero nga yung nga sinabi ng professor na may ano, ang mga kaninig lang sa kampana na yon ay kung hindi si Clay pero yung mga ibang tao din. So it does imply na baka nga um, at that timeline sa oras na yon around the time na si Clay ay nasa Mari, ay nasa um, no limit ang ere meron ding ibang mga tao doon na pwede natin makilala. Matagal na tingin sa mga tao na baka si Fidel yun pero habang tumatagal I think it's more Uh, we can we can argue that you know Fidel is like an original character na talagang nanggaling sa no limit ang era mismo like from that um, era hindi talaga siya isang bagong tao but we'll see we'll see maybe next week or in the next two weeks kapag nagparinig din mga kampana and you know kapag nagpakita yung portal, portal ba makita natin yung mga ibang tao sa nasabi ni ni Profesor Isunulat ni... Sorry, hindi ko mabasa to. Di ba po siguro pa tayo yun? Uh, hindi po siguro. Yep, hindi nga si Crispin. Isunulat naman ni Mars Ailey. Wala po, sa, wala po sa libro yung funeral. Baka dinagdag lang yan. Yung paglalakad lang ni Sis uh, with Barge Sibyl ang nasa book. Ah, okay. Ha, ah, okay. Uh, thank you, Mars, for that. Talagang wala, uh, wala sa isip ko na ano, nangyari pa rin yung sinu na ano, nakasama ng Barge Sibyl si Sisa. Nagaling pala sa libro yun. Okay. Yeah, pero yung funeral, that, that thing was really new. Um, I, rem- I rem- remember when I first saw it, parang 
Na-curious ako at nagtaka din na parang wala naman to sa libro. Thank you for that, Mars. Isinulat ni Lola, Ada. Hindi si Crispin yung binurol. Yep, hindi nga si Crispin. Isinulat naman nila. Why so late sa upload soon na kaya ma-recent? Okay. So, in-upload ko itong video na to, itong episode 21, around, um, I think it's it was a Tuesday, right? So, I was like one day late for this episode. Kasi nag-bakasyon ako, I went to Seattle. So, I apologize kung late ako mag-upload. Lagi ako late mag-upload. That's, that's me. It's, you know, it's, um, it's not easy to do a reaction and then i-upload ko agad, right? I need to do some editing. I just can't. put out the entire episode sa YouTube then what's I mean if ginawa ko yun then what's the what's the point of the the video uploads ng GMA Network diba kung pwede naman na panoorin yung mga episode na yun sa sa reaction videos ko so yeah I need to do some editing to, up, to avoid some copyright strikes and copyright claims and at the same time um when it um Whenever I do reaction videos, the whole point of the video is my reaction, hindi yung parang like the entire episode itself na parang parang yung panoorin. Kaya ko din nalagay ng wa parang ano, harang yung yung video. Kasi it's just really hard to um to fight the the copyright thing, di ba? And yeah, um, it's going to be a hassle kapag na-copyright. Yung gaya ng episode 15, may mga nagtataka ko nasa yung episode 15 ko. Actually, episode 15 was copyright claim and it got blocked in the Philippines. That's why you guys can't watch it anymore. So, unfortunately, yun ang nangyari. But yeah, uh, kaya, kaya late yung upload ko. Thanks for writing that in la. Isunod naman ni Roem um, Acasio. 1345, nagbigay ng hints si Mr. Tolot na hindi lang si Clay yung nasa mundo ng Noli. Yeah. Yung nga ini-imply natin na baka nga may ibang mga taga-mundo sa sa Noli Mitanghere. I mean, not, not taga-mundo, pero yung mga bagong tao, di ba? Hindi lang si Clay yung nag-iisang bagong tao uh, around that time. Pero we'll see. We'll see in the next episode. If they, if ever the writers did um try doing that, I will be surprised and it will, you know, there's a chance na baka magbago yung flow ng story. At least from Clyde's perspective kung saan pupunta yung story, di ba? Pero still, we are going to follow the Noli Metangere story gaya nga nasabi nyo, nasabi ng mga writers from time to time. Isunod naman ni Lakwatcha TV. Malalaman mo po ng funeral sa next episodes. Yep, nalaman na natin yun. Timing lang na pinabas ng pagpatay at paglabas ni Sisa ay sabay na parang ibig sabihin ay yun ay si Chris Pinyap. Yung nga kaya nagtaka ako. Pero andun si mga dong. Pero may hint na din yung eksena, eksena na yun about sa nangyari kay Chris Pin and at the same time yung araw na yun, which is November 1 and 2 celebration. Tagal kong inaabangan tong reaction mo. <laughs> Thank you so much la Lakwatsa. Kaya pala na tigilan ka sa paggawa na busy ka pero happy to see you. Hey, thank you so much um, Nakwacha for leaving that comment. I really appreciate it. Um, na inabangan yung mga reaction ko. Yeah. I like it when people leave comments like that because, you know, um, ginagaran ako gumawa ng mga reaction videos of course but at the same time I am obligated to do reaction videos kasi I already promised to you guys that I'm going to react to it, all of the episodes and, you know, I like seeing Maya Klate Bada. It will be different if I'm not enjoying the show. I might just stop doing the reactions at all. I said, what's the point of doing reactions for something na pinapunod mo na nabobored ka, diba? Pero Mayra Clara at Ibarra is, is a special kind of teleserie. At the same time, it's all about the No Limitang and the story, which is I'm a big fan of. So yun, thank you, Lakwacha, for that. Okay, Ayene, sorry, Ayen0925. Can watch here live and upload the episodes just a few. Yeah, ayun nga yung ginagawa ng, ano, ng GMA. Um, in-upload na na yung mga, yung mga, yata, hindi ko alam. Ano ba, nilabas na yung, ano, nilabas na yung GMA. I mean, yung Nolimitangaret. 
at ibara episode sa mismong website nila. Pero napansin ko sa mismong website nila, naka-unlisted yung mga yun. At ina-upload pa rin nila sa YouTube. So, basically, when you do a YouTube search about the new episodes, hindi siya lalabas sa YouTube kasi naka-unlisted siya. It will only be available if ever napupunta pa kayo sa GMA Network na website. You know, para madagdagan yung traffic sa ano nila, sa website nila. And you guys, you know, so that we might also be able to see some of their advertisements, something like that. Isunod naman ni MJ Tandingan. Mga talaga may alam si Fidel. Um, alam about saan. Um, MJ, sure. I'm sorry, hindi I was sure about what you're trying to say. Isunod ni Earl. Nag-live siya ng ano, ng episode 22. Ganyan. Dahil sa kanya, na ko yung episode 22. So thank you so much for that, Earl. At na-upload ko yung video na maaga. Uh, Sarod mo ni Theodore Ginochi. Sir, try mo sa Bibli. Maghahanap na nito yung episode. Ilang oras after ng palabas mo na agad sa Bilibili. Ano yung Bilibili? So, sorry Theodore, hindi ko alam kung ano yung Bilibili na sinasabi mo. Uh, mahina yung vocabulary ko pagdating sa Tagalog. Kahit man pinanak ako sa Pilipinas at nagtatagalog ako, pero yeah, mahina talaga vocabulary ko sa Tagalog. Isinunod naman po ni Mark Joseph Marquez sa episode 22 po yung sagot nyo. Yeah, yung tanong ko about kung kanino yung bangkay na yun. Yung pala kamag-anak ni mga dong. Okay. Okay. The Amazing Noy PPH. Okay. They said that Mikai... From now on, babasahin ko din yung Maria Clara Tibara as Mikai. <laughs> Because it reminds me of um, of the pamangkin ba? Pamangkin ng girlfriend ko which is pangalan niya yung Mikai. Will be shown in Netflix 2023. That is why they removed the live streaming YouTube and place it on Gmail. Ganun ba? Okay. Kung sabi na na ilalabas na sa Netflix yun, then that, that will be great, I guess. Pero at the same time, um, libre din naman. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how how those things work. Kung maglalagay ka ng isang TV show sa Netflix and other live stream, uh, other streaming platforms. Pero you know, um, ginawa din naman nilang available yung mga episodes na to for free sa website nila. So, at kailangan pa mo mag-Netflix, which is kailangan mo magbayad. I don't know. Pero if that's what they said, that's what they said. Thank you for writing that in. I'm the amazing OP. Fed say. Super happy po. Finally, nakapag-post na po kayo. Been patiently waiting po for your reaction, Fed. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Fed, for writing that. I really appreciate your comment. Like when I get your comment mo sa bawat video, and that is just really awesome to see. Thank you so much again, Fed. Okay. Is it ni amazing OP? It was not a funeral of Crispin. Yeah. I think that's pretty clear right now. Ano na natin yun? Okay, so nulat naman ni ARL. 64 chapters on Noli and 39 chapters for El Fili according to Suzette Doctolero. M- uh, Mikai will cover until El Fili. Okay, that's really good to know. I like seeing that. Because I really want to see the El Fili Bustelismo story being played by within this um, show na to. Kasi I like the El Filipus Rismo story more compared to Noli Metangre. Surat naman ni Love Love. Guys, grabe yung mga scenes. Getting darker na. Salamat po sa reaction. Thank you so much, Love Love, for um, watching my reactions. And yeah, you're right. I think itong episode na to, itong at least for this week, this has been the most horrifying week for the Mare Clara Tibara um, TV show. A lot of dark tones, a lot of tonal shifts. Uh, there were some comedic elements, pero mostly it's all about oh, dark, dark, darker themes. Not only sa pagkamatay ni Crispin, pero at the same time, yung pagka-transform ni Sisa into the Sisa that everybody knows about, right? Okay. Isunod naman ni Jan Sampaton. The reason why they are comparing the events to a cancer is because the English title of Don Mitangari is the social cancer. Yup, that's tama yun. The English title of the El Filipusterismo is The Reign of Greed. Yeah, uh, The Reign of Greed, okay. Uh, this is interesting because I didn't know about that. Akala ko lang, uh, meaning nun ay yung the, the filibuster. But yeah, The Reign of Greed, okay, that's cool. 
But yeah, uh, I like that commentary from um, from the professor. Na professor ba nagsabi nun na about sa cancer and stuff. Yeah, I like that commentary. I mean, it really speaks a lot about the uh, ano yung kailangan idadar sa mga Pilipino during that time and the fact that the social cancer is basically, from my understanding, is yung mga namumuno, yung mga higher ups, right? Yung mga pare, isa siyang cancer, na kumakalat ng ka, kumakalat lang na kumakalat sa buong Pilipinas, kaya nasaka pa ng Pilipinas. At the same time, they are cancers because abusive sila. Nagdadala silang sakit sa Pilipinas, madaming mga Pilipino na mamatay. And then, you know, um, basically, the the higher class sa Pilipinas and um, the Spaniards in general, they are cancer um, during that time. Thanks for writing that, Jans. Isunod naman ni Mars Ailey, ang intimidating ni Maria. Grabe din pag-overtake ni ate. Sigodera agad with friends pa. Yung nga eh, nagulat ako doon, um, Mars, um, um, di ko na-expect na mapapakita at si... Ito ba yung episode na yun, nagpakita si Maria sa bahay ni Kersostamo, pero, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, ako matatakaw doon ako kapag, 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 kapag nagpakita bigla yung girlfriend ko sa bahay ko. So, wala akong paalam. Like, ooh, calm down, girl. But yeah, I just like seeing this version of Manek Lala. Ngalang beses ko sinabi na it feels like this show is more of a... It's a, it's a more superior way of telling the Dolly Mitangere story. And I really appreciate that. Kasi, you know, there's just a lot more scenes. There's just a lot more room to... To tell more about the characters. To let us show... Uh, to let them show us kung anong klaseng tao sila compared to just reading about them sa libro and yeah that's why I like this show a lot isa rin naman Theodore ni Ginochi yung dialogue ni Sir Torres about comparison of the novel to a cancer is on the intro of the book oh okay okay galing ng take nila on showing up in the NC so much ah, galing na take nila okay so wak na dahil ng PS okay interesting um Theodore you know Chi na yung comparison na yun ay galing hindi lang pala galing sa title galing din pala sa intro ng libro okay kasi doon yung mga libro parang merong mga kung merong prologue, meron din mga notes galing sa writer mismo. Ako, iniisip ko po yung mga ganun. And yung nabasa kong version ay yung abridged version ng Noni Mitangre, which is a shortened version and also English siya. And at the same time, I also skip the intro. Pero that is very interesting to know, um, Theodore. Thank you for writing that in. Isunod naman ni Nelly Padua. Glad to watch your reaction again. Episode 20 is so interesting. God, friend, chingin sa mo agad. Um, thank you so much, um, Nelly, for writing that in. I really appreciate your comment. And yeah, <laughs> basically the entire uh, week is full of intense, um, are just intense. It's an intense set of episodes. And yeah, just like I said, it can only um, go worse from here, diba? And so that's the Mariani May Restauro. Thank you for this, Jasper. I recommend you watch and react KMJS featuring behind the scenes. Okay. Please. Thank you so much for writing that in. Maniani may um, restore. Um, I've been thinking back to um, back and forth about whether I have to react to the behind the scenes stuff about Maria Clara Tibara. Because uh, one reason is that kung bakit ayaw ko mag-react is that I want to get surprised about ano kasi the, you know araw-araw naman natin nakikita yung Maria Clara Tebara and we have this two days break so I, I'm like okay what's the point of watching it if if ramdam ko na yung mga yung mga mga yung mga kung paano nila hinahandle yung story and kung paano nila hinahandle yung production and then yung show itself kung paano nila nilaran yun But at the same time, I can see that there's uh there's some kind of pleasure watching the behind the scenes stuff because naikita mo yung um literally what's happening behind the scenes. Naikita mo yung mga insights ng mga writers na hindi natin nakikita from just simply watching the show. 
nakikita din nating insights ng mga filmmakers kung ano yung opinion ng mga cast about sa show na pinoproduce nila kung saan sila um, a part of but yeah, maybe someday um, someday Marianne iba mag-react ako dyan pero for the meantime I'm just really busy and ang kaya na power ko is gumawa ng isang video in one day and doing multiple videos is just really um, it's just impossible for me for the meantime because I also have to you know um, play video games which is my hobby just browse the internet uh, read uh, some articles some books and um, at the same time I also have to do homework and review and since film student ako may mga movies ako na kailangan panoodin para sa school and yeah those things those things add um, add up um, kaya nangibisi ako pero thank you so much Mariana for writing that in oras na para manood I mean <laughs> oras na para naman sa comments ng episode 22 I've been talking for like 21 minutes now. Okay, so let's just brisa natin na unte about dito. Good thing there's a lot less comments here. Okay, episode 22. Sino tama ni third, the third petilio. Mas malakas pa ang sounds na pumuya mo, Brad. Kaya sa sound video mo. Um, Toro ko na hina pa rin. Okay, um, sorry, sorry. Uh, ay tiyaring episode na may pinakain ako kasi misa mamukain ako. habang nanonood ng, ng show pero yeah sorry about that uh, sorry about that um, Petilo uh, I think inaayos ko na yung issue na yun in the next coming episodes pero yeah thanks for the criticism dito ko nalalaman kung if ever I'm doing something good or bad sa mga video na in-upload ko uh. okay isa na tama ni The Amazing Noy PPH The Alfares mentioned that he knew Fidel as the son of a wealthy businessman, Senor de los Reyes. So it seems that theory of Fidel is in another is ruled out. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, kaya nga habang tumatagal, just like I said, lumalawa na lumalawa yung theory na si Fidel ay galing sa, sa modern world. And I think that somewhat confirms na galing talaga siya sa No Limit Tangere na, na world kasi nga... Um, meron siyang kilala ng Alfares ang tatay niya. Pero, yeah. Um, kung ganun, kung edi ganun, um, it will be intriguing if ever we're going to see his father. Pero I doubt that we are going to see him. But hey, na-name drop niyo para ng tatay niya. So, hey. If nagpakita man siya, um, that will be, I will not be surprised. Isinulat naman ni Jennifer Labores ang hina ng audio. Hindi halos man na yeah, napasik mo ngayon. I'm sorry about that. Um, kasi whenever I'm writing, I'm um, whenever I'm recording something, I can't adjust the audio of the sh- of the episode and yung audio na mic ko sa post-production. So, once na record ko na yun, that's it. Kaya I need to do like a lot of um, adjusting before recording videos like this. But unfortunately, yeah, this is like one of the one of the reaction videos na talagang ah, pangit yung audio quality. So I really apologize about that. Um, Jay Better said, Senor De Los Reyes, the father of Fidel. Yep, um, yung tama, yung ano naman siya. I'm just curious to know if Senor De Los Reyes is, um, is a character from the books. But I also think na baka fiction, um, ga, um, He's, he might be a new character para sa show na to guys sa Fidel um, iso na ito man ano anonymous bakit wala na sa youtube ang full episode starting 20 onwards cannot watch GMA late na kasi dumaan natin hindi yun naman okay basically nag reply ako dito um, anonymous na ah sa tiktok di ba yun naman nag upload yung episode okay But yeah, hindi na available sa YouTube. They decided to move the episodes sa GMA app and sa GMA network na website nila. Um, Sulo ito man ni Rogeline Morales. Bakit walang sounds, Jasper? So, sadyang bingi ako. Um, I'm pretty sure na mayroong sounds. Baka nakamute lang yung speaker mo. 
Uh, Midnight Lover wrote, Yes po, pinag-aralan namin nurse ang mental illness. May psychology po kami, application, at mental instruction. Um, ito na gagawin ko. So, whenever I read a comment, mag-reply at sana. Hello. I replied to your comment. Oh my god, so we're going to type again. Eh, iwan ko na lang yan. Pero, um, thank you so much, Midnight Lover, for telling me about it. Kasi tinanong ko din kung pinapag-aralan nila yung mga nurses, pinapag-aralan nila yung mental illness. Turns out, yeah, um, pinapag-tinuturo nga sa kanila, which, make, which makes sense, right? Kasi, you know, nurse ka... Uh, not only katawan ng taong kailangan pag pero at the same time yung mental ng tao, diba? Pero yeah, I think that's a good um, confirmation na yung nga pinapag din ninyo ang mga mental illness and stuff. Thank you so much for that. Okay, ma- mahaba to. So let's read some part of this. Sinod ni Arte. Clay. Clay um, asked God here in the episode to make his presence appear to her If you got Clay and her prayer, feelings, emotions, sentiments, questions, doubts, experiences, thinking, understanding, mind, and all she asked, questions said, shared, and told him, or by letting her feel him and express us, then in the episode, the next, he surprisingly immediately answered. Yeah, you're right. The big lang nakpakita nga si, ano, si Maria Clara, di ba? Kasi uh, Clay was already doubting um, the Son of God's or God um, yung mga pinagagawa niya sa mundong to especially during that time kung bakit lang niya pinapabayaan niya mga tao and yeah immediately her prayer got answered because nagpakita si Maria Clara right so and si Maria Clara din pala yung ano, nagbigay ng, ng panyo para ma-wipe nga yung tears ni Lai which is something na okay okay um, that, that's that's a pretty cool thing to see um, nothing mind blowing pero hey I like seeing that right katoliko ako pero I don't practice uh, catholicism that much anymore pero small things like that really um, like adds a lot whenever if you're a religious person and you just like seeing those things like yung mga yung mga power ni God um, happening in a show like this because it shows na hey God here is also a character in the show and even though everything was kind everything is kind of shitty when it comes to what's happening to the characters that's the that's the price of freedom right that's the price the price of life If if you want to enjoy life, you can enjoy it. But at the same time, it's really difficult. I think that's simply what life is. And it's not the money. Can't they? Yo, person, come and comment dito, Brad. Nigga ba? Di ko alam kung may kung ano may ginayasyo mo pag napaul mo episode twenty. I'm big at waiting for that. I don't remember kung ano nangyari sa episode twenty three. Sorry, episode twenty three ba yun para nag transform na siya, no? Si nag-fully nag- transform na si Sisa, di ba? But yeah, um, thank you so much, Kenteo, for watching my reaction. Whenever it comes to heavy scenes like that, hindi ako umiiyak. Mahirap ako payakin, pero <laughs> you can really see the sadness um, in my face whenever something like that happens. And yeah, episode 23 is is a very, it's a pretty hard episode to watch. Can I wait for your reactions to episode 23? Eros Dylan, right? Thank you so much for that, Eros. Um, okay. The, ama- the amazing Noi P- PH wrote, The Padre Salvi scene with Clyde turned out to be on the opposite end when he accused Ibala as the orchestrator against him. Okay. I like when Padre Salvi was pers- uh, perplexed when he tried to see who Clyde was confessing and mocking. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, that's a... Uh, 
Uh, because Jasper is still in this marathon, so I just wrote out his theory that Valis Abra would confess his sin. Yeah, it was that way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, man, that that episode, <laughs> that, that, that was a conversation, you Um, just like I said, na one of the other highlights of I think episode 24 yata yun eh. or episode 23. I think episode 24 na um tama ba? Episode 23 nga ba yun? Wait nga lang guys, check mo nga lang to. Yeah, 23. I think that's one of the highlights sa uh, episode na yun kasi sa episode 23. Kasi man, um nasa loob ka ng ano, nas, nas, yung mismong pana, nasa loob ng confession stall. Tapos the fact na ik- pinapakonfess ka ng ng tao sa labas, tapos ko yung pare, everything, everything stops si Turpin now. And yeah, that was, that scene was very well written. Probably one of the better scenes na gawa ng Pilipino na talagang nagustuhan ko, like talagang na-amaze ako. And I'm pretty sure na yung scene na yun is going to be one of those scenes na papanood-panoodin ko um, from time to time if ever I'm bored because I just like seeing that scene in general. Okay, isunod na mo ni Kwerte mo. Mapanakit ang episode na to. Nabigyan linaw sa akin kung bakit nabaliw si Sisa bukod sa kahirapan na pagmamalupit the whole time na pinaghahanap ang mga bata nakaligtaan na din niyang kumain. Kala ko kasi si kasi kalay lang ako umiyak just ko kay aling sisa din pala ramdam mo yung love ng isang nanay at sakit na mo wala sa bus mo sa mga anak iyan ko ko saril kudos to the artist at the gym yeah kudos to them and thank you so much for that I'm Courtney for for the comment and yeah I think every I agree with with uh, with your statement Lahat ay tama and I got nothing else to say about that. Um, thank you so much for that, Quarty. Hindi po naman comment dito kasi mga... Ayan, ano kaya? Alright. Let's keep on going. Isa na naman ni EG and Fredo Tamon. And now sana magbago ang pagtingin ng iba kay Sisa. Exactly. This is a very good comment. Kung dati pinagtatawan nila ang karakter ni Sisa without knowing kung anong ang hirap na pinagdaanan niya, sobrang sakit, sobrang lungkot at pagkagaling talaga ni Miss Andrea Torres. Yeah, okay. You are 100% correct about um, Jan Gian kasi nga in generation ko for, for like a good sum of generations and decades, um, I think we were primed Diba? I think we were primed and cultivated uh, whenever there's baliw na tao around we should avoid them and you know other people would um, make um, laugh at them diba? and it's natural kung bakit sometimes whenever they think about Sisa pinagtatawa na natin si Sisa but what's important about those things is context right? since nakita na natin context kung bakit nabaliw si Sisa now we can feel um we can now um, feel bad about her nakita na natin kung bakit siya nabaliw ng ganon because of all of the kahirapan na kailangan yung dinanas than our dinanas during the this entire show na to not only he has a uh, neglectful ba tama ba yung word neglectful husband pero he has two children that who has to work para si kabuboy nila Unfortunately, yung isang bata ay nawawala, yung isa naman ay allegedly patay na. And yeah, basically lahat everything that is uh, lahat ng identity ni Sisa ay nawala within a week. And it's just very sad to see. And kabag nga kabag nababalo yung tao. Again, whenever you see someone na nababaliw um, sa labas, everything has a context and everything has a story. That's why, you know, it's really easy to judge. But at the same time, um, it takes a lot of time to think about the context of why they are in that place right now. 
So yeah, hopefully there will be the next generation of people who will read the Noli Mitangare story. They will now feel more... Um, they will see the hum- the humanity of Sisa. And the fact that um, she can be the image of like the mental il- illness pagdating sa, sa Pilipinas, diba? So a very good comment about Jan Chian. I completely agree with you. Okay. The Amazing Noi PPH wrote, Episode 23, last scene with Sisa was the most jerking for me. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing reaction reaction video of that. You will really appreciate how the Andrea Tor is portraying Sisa. She made it her own. Kudos really to Derek Zig. Yeah, kudos to the entire um, cast and crew. Again, I hate on episode 23. Um, um, you are right. Um, Targang, it's easily one of the harder episodes to watch sa bong show na to so far kasi everybody fell in love with Sisa given na uh, turns out na itong artist na to na si Binibining Andrea Torres is someone na uh, people who actually really likes like in real life too um, it, adds, it adds a lot given na uh, just like I said we now know the context of her kabaliwan and Yeah, it only makes sense that a lot of people are really sad seeing um, Caesar's transform- transformation. Because you know it's an eventuality. The ink is dry, and yeah, it will eventually happen. Na mababalu siya. And yeah, that's the that's the sad thing about Noni Betangere. Nobody in this story wins, and one of the earlier victims of this story is the Caesar character. And yeah, um, thank you so much for writing that in um, the amazing OEP. Sino tama ni Padre ko kasing galing galing the Barbie protesta. Clay's character really uh, represents us, the viewers, ang kanya POV sa mga pangyayari. You know what? I agree with that. Ganon na ganon din ang ating mga viewers. Really showed how powerless were the Filipinos during that time against the Paris and Spanish conquest and to think that may get 300 years tayo under them. Yeah, it's just crazy that 300 years tayo Other than imagine all of those people who had to suffer, who had to die because of colonialism, diba? But that's that's a white man's thing. White people like to colonize um, smaller nations, but yeah, that's the. I say people are very territorial, so that's the thing. And yeah, I agree with you. Nas tamang Barbie Fortesa is the representation of the viewers, because. How we, how we react to the characters of Nori Mitangare through this show is how Barbie will react to it too. Just like I said, if ever ako yung nasa mundo na to, pwede ako maging yung mga actions ko ay para maging Barbie Fortessa din. Because you understand Clyde's character and Clyde's context about the world here. She was born in a very privileged time. Um, even though not perfect, We got women rights here. Uh, we had it easier, right? We have it easier compared to um, during the times of colonialism. And imagine being transported in a time where lahat ng rights mo ay mawawala and then isa kang low-class citizen in a country that you are born in. Yeah, it kind of makes sense kung bakit yung mga pinagagawa ni Barbie para sa kagabutan ng lahat ay ginagawa niya. Given na isa din siyang nurse. ma feeling niya na kailangan niya tulungan ng mga tao nang kailangan ng may tulong whether it's mentally it's it's a mental thing or a physical thing she will help because she's a nurse that's uh that's what bayanis do and yeah it's kind of sad na she had to endure all of those things right eh kaya yung professor parang naawa na sa kanya okay for the pin comment ang pinin nito Pinin ko ang comment ni Vixon. Fun fact. Pinabas ng episode 22, November 1, base sa informasyon ng mga sisisa, November 1 na rin ang incident leading to her illness. Ah, so, nakilang mag-stretch. And isa sa mga karoon sa itong buhay ng total lunar eclipse ng higa ng November 8. Okay. 
nila Ramos ng Chata, Mas Perez Pasco. Sorry. Ang mga mayroon, isinabi din ng Pops na magiging portal ni Clay pabalik. Possible na yun ang episode ng katlong gabi na pagbalik ni Clay sa napakain, napakakit to sa details talaga ng MC. Kinalibutan na rin ako minsan. <laughs> Hindi na rin ako magugunan. kung magagawa pa nila ng paraan na may sabay ang pagkatapos ng normal na chapter sa besperas ng Pasko ni Sinasa naman. Okay, interesting. Wala. Search ko lang kung kailan yung next November 8 ba yun? Yeah. Okay. I think the fact na whenever something is happening in the story, in a, in a narrative, in a show na pinagplanuhan months before, na pinagplanuhan years before, and yung mga events na yung magsasakto sa mismong araw kung kailan nipapalabas yon sa atin. I love stuff like that. I super love stuff like that. And gaya nga sa libro, I think nakita ko to sa isang Facebook post na yung uh, yung first signs of symptoms ng na mental illness si Sisa ay nagpakita ar- around November 1. And the fact na around November 1 din, yun din ang nangyari sa mismong character na to in the show. That was a very fine analysis on the details. I love it. And then it's going to happen again on November 8. Because I think yung Lunar Eclipse episode ay mangyayari din on the night of the Lunar Eclipse here. Dito sa mundo na to. And yeah. That is just simply amazing. I like I like stuff like that. And you're right, no, Vax, uh, Vaxon. Um, I just love the fact na napakin na sa details. And that is just really awesome to see. Okay. Let's now go to episode 23. Now, we're going to but let's try to go through here. Sana konti comments. Oh my god, Adabi. <laughs> Alright. The Pinoy Chopping Board 101 wrote, Kulang cool naman yung get up mo sa abaniko. <laughs> Why wala balot sa ya? Total, nagsimon ka, magmari, aklara ka naman. Okay. Yeah, ito yating episode naman ng pumaypay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> wala pong bilhin na damit para magbarong saya, so, at mag-abaniko yung ganun yata. Maybe next time, di ba? <laughs> okay, isa lang naman ni Macman, isang fan, ay isang fan ng GMA or ng show na ito, at uh, nag-comment interesting daw yung show dahil sa based on historical events. Wala lang, isang fan ng GMA or ng show na ito, at uh, nag-comment. na interesting daw ang show dahil ito ay based on historical events. No, it's fiction. Well, it was based on historical events. Uh, may fiction naman. Yeah, I mean, um, in a way, historical channel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, yeah, it's right. Basically, hindi naman siya like, um, paano ba to? Paano ko ba explain to? Yung mga nangyari sa No Limit Tangare ay hindi literal na nangyari in real life, right? Um, walang Maria Clara, walang um, walang Sisa, walang Padre Sabi, walang Padre Damaso, walang um, walang Christos na Maybara. That's right. You're right about that. Um... Pero I, I think um, maybe instead of... Yeah, kasi events hindi naman nangyari ngayon, hindi naman nangyari naman ngayon. Pero at the same time, I think what Nelly is trying to imply here is that it was based on at least Philippine history. Kasi nga, wala mang Maria Clara, pero madaming mga dalagang Pilipina ye yeah, during that time, of course. Wala mang Krasos na Maybara, pero madaming mga ilustrado during that time, gaya... Si Jose Rizal, isang ilustrado, isang Pilipino na nakapunta ng ibang masa, Europa, para mag-aral at bumulit ng Pilipinas, mga ganun-ganun. Wala mang Padre Salvi, wala mang Padre Damaso, pero abusive priles did exist during that time. And yeah, just like I said, abusive sila. At wala mang sisa, pero a lot of Filipino women during that time were uh, became victims because of colonialism. 
some some of them were raped um some of them um had to work uh, in a way na ayo makita ng simbahan you know prostitution yung mga bagay hey some of them might have also lost uh, family members because of the involvement of the of the catholic church and then yung mga other other uh, authorities sa Pilipinas na yun. So while you know there it's not a one to one retelling of some event in the in Philippine history pero it's a reflection. No limitangana is a reflection of Philippine history during the Spanish colonialism. So basically, uh Macman, you're right and Neddy Padua, you guys both are right. Uh, okay, um uh, sinot niya na I'm sorry, Arte. Um, I'm not going to comment. 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 I'm Okay. Yeah. I agree with you, Andrea Torres. Yeah, Andrea Torres, um, Barbie Forteza. Basically, um, am the entire week. It's Barbie Forteza and Andrea's and Andrea Torres's week. Like they had the hardest lines to deal with, and yeah, they executed it very well. I'm um, thank you for writing that in Artist Shining Art. Isunod naman ni Christian Basito. Kaya Jasper possible din ba na pagbalik ni Clay sa modern world? Is paano kung nabaliw din yung mama niya doon? Kasi di ba nawala? Oh, interesting. Ipain ko to. Okay. Sorry kung ito na yung pwede ko reply guys. I mean, it's just really sad na If only we have like more than 24 hours in the world, we can reply one by one. But unfortunately, this is the fastest way to reply to it. Okay, Christian, that's an interesting question. Um, I think I think my answer is ko. I think. I think din na I think. pagbalik ni Clay sa mundong yun, hindi natin makikita mababaliw si Narcisa, which is nanay niya. Kasi if ever, nagagawin na rin ganong klaseng story na, 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 na mababaliw si Narcisa, at least, da, um, dapat na rin nilang gawin yon alongside with episode, uh, this week's um, set of episodes. Maganda sana kung ipagsabay yung kanilang pagbaano Um, yung pag- pagiging baliw nila yung mga ganun pagsasabay nila yun pero um, it's really hard to tell because yeah I, I I can't I can't have any comments about that mahirap, mahirap sabihin there's a chance there's a chance pero kung pupusta ako pupusta ako sa idea na hindi mababaliw si Narcisa right Kasi madami naman siyang support system doon eh. Or actually hindi. Wala doon. Wala doon siyang support system. Kasi support system lang niya yung mismong nanay. Ay yung mismong anak niya. Which is si Clay. Pero hey. If ever nabaliw si Narcisa. Then. You know. It kind of makes sense. It mirrors the Sisa story. And. If ever malalam ni Clay. Yung fate ni Sisa. that will be like a good plot so that if Clay wasn't able to save Sisa, at least Clay will be able to save her mother if ever nabaliw yung nanay na yun yung, yung nanay niya, di ba? Kasi I don't want to spoil anything pero yeah, I hope, I hope you I answered your question, uh, Christian. Mahirap isipin eh, pero that's a very good question. I I need more time to think about it. Thank you for writing that in, Amelia. 
<laughs> Nelly Padua, thank you so much, Nelly, for leaving that comment. I really appreciate it. Uh, I love doing uh, reaction videos. I say it's just simply fun. Even though we're almost out of time, it's just super fun. And then seeing your comments about my reaction, about my reaction, and about the episodes um, too. Yeah, it's super fun. I like. Sometimes I'm like, "Lala, lala, 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 yeah this is awesome um thank you thank you so much uh for watching the episode with me it's not the danny um pay so sad the play chopping board 101 but it's not my pipe ass and up no pusa amujan um no pusa on ko yung girlfriend ko na hindi na no dang reaction videos ko hey she's also busy busy just at school and she's also a full-time worker okay So, ito naman yung Marlin TV. Hagulgul ako dito. Hagulgul ba yung parang umiyak? Yung parang malungkot? If, if it is, then yeah, hagulgul din ako sa sa episode na to. Armando Ferolino wrote, Bravo. Yep, you are right. Bravo nga, Armando. Natawa ako biglas. Okay, so ito naman yung Midnight Lover. Natawa ako biglas sa biglang pa may paister. Nagasya mo ko na gusto mo ako. Wow! <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, actually, nabili ko yung pa may pay. sa yung pumunta ng Seattle, meron doon isang Filipino store na nagbibenta ng Filipino store na may mga karindiga food and Filipino products. Meron doon sila doon mga um, eco bags and stuff. And may, may nakita ko pa may pay doon. And I decided to just buy it, right? As it turns out, nandito siya ngayon sa tapat ng computer ko. May isang ganagamit ko kapag mainit. Kapag mainit. Pero most of the time, it's malamig. Right? Pero ito, ang laki na pa may panatong na nabili ko. Grabe, oh. Ayan. Dang. Astig. Alright. Isulat naman ni Bet Dizon. Maraming salamat. No, maraming salamat sa inyo. Bet Dizon. Isulat naman ni Meet Night Lover. Sa confession ng mga tao na nagkumpisal sa pare. Pero sa scene, ni Clark Ray, muntik na niya pang magawa si Padre Sabi mo. Ayun nga eh. Like, that's why I really love this episode. Kasi everything so topsy-turvy. Especially dun sa pare, um, kay Padre Salvi na sino yun. Um, it's just crazy na um, naisip na mga writers yung ganong sino yun because it's simply amazing. Clearly, wala to sa libro. Pero this is, what, what, this is why the Clay character is great because not only how she handled that scene with the, with the pare, pero the fact na adding the clay character to the Norimitanga story opens up a lot of opportunities to show more of more of the sides of the of the Norimitanga characters right dalke clay mas nakita natin yung humanity ni Ibarra at the same time nakita din natin yung mabilis na pagkagalit ni Ibarra which is very influential pagdating sa mga later chapters and you know probably on the next book nakikita din natin yung humanity ni Maria Clara and how kung yung perception ni Maria Clara with the idea na si Ibarra ay may kasamang babae sa kanyang bahay kahit man isa itong pinsan kahit man isa itong pinsan pero nakikita natin dahil kay Clyde nakikita natin si Maria Clara ay isang ano uh, na nangangamba din para sa kanyang nobyo mga ganun-ganun bagay diba and dahil din kay Clay may nakita din natin yung mga natatagdagan ng challenges si Padre Salvi which is which is really good kasi at the same time nakikita din natin at least yung humanity ni Padre Salvi kinakabahan siya natatakot si Padre Salvi and I just li- Um, simply love seeing that because Padre Salve is not like a mustache twirling character na napaka masama nakikita din natin na tao si Padre Salve who unfortunately is a very shitty person but yeah you are right about that Pinay Lover isunod naman ni Ami Lazi sa live chat mismo ang kapuso sa yung naman siya nang lingnan is that doon ako nag-aabang okay that's awesome then um, thank you so much sa mga tao na siya siya nang link sa akin but that's really good to know Sino naman ni Roger Din Morales. Thank you, Jasper, for this reaction video. Thank you so much, Din Roger Din, for watching my reaction videos. I really love doing them. And yeah, see you guys on the next episode, right? Sino naman ni Hilakwacha. 
nakailang nood na ako pati lahat ng reactor kaya po ulit din ako naluluwa tapos <laughs> tapos pagbukas mo ng tiktok marami din ah marami din pa talaga sa tiktok ha trendy pa lang nagigigil sa bandage ng basilyo eh yun talaga ang pinagsimulan ng bakit ng balaw si Sisa ako yeah sa bagay yeah yeah you're right well that's interesting um, na nakwatch niya na parang itong week ko lang nalalaman na may mga ganito din palang nilalabas din pa na yung mga ganitong Sikat din pala yung Maria Clara de Barras sa TikTok. Hindi ako nagti-TikTok. I have my other reasons why I don't do TikTok. Pero yeah. Okay, sinunod naman ng EB Mercado. This episode show... This episode this episode shows last November 1 po here in the Philippines and some psychology state po na based on November 1 po yung nagstala symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, yun nga yung parang sa libro nga na yun na nagsimula yung mental illness ni, ni Sisa yung mga symptoms and stuff sa November 1 mismo. Ayan, nangyari din yun sa librong, um, sa show na to. And at the same time, pinalabas yun sa mismo araw ng November 1. Isunot ni J. Loreto. Dear I episode. Yep. You are 100% correct. Uh, oh, sorry. Kakakain ko na kasi. Okay. Thank you so much for this, Butomelon. Um, uh, Ito yata yung, ano, eh, yung website nila mismo. Eh. Pero yeah, uh, may copy na ako niyan. Pero again, thank you so much for sharing that with Meron. I really appreciate the small efforts like this thing that you do. Okay. Isa na lot naman ni... Ay, ang dami pa. Uh, let's just try to go. Basahin natin yung madaming ano. Okay, ang bigat ng loob ng scene ni Andrea as if meron talaga siyang anak in real life na paghuhugutan pero wala. Because the transition, yeah, talaga mo believe. Yeah, you're you're right about that. Um, Jam Evans, mabigat talaga sa loob ng si Andrea, because it's a human being slowly transforming into someone who isn't herself. Basically, hindi <laughs> wala nasa sa tamang pag-iisip, pero mostly the one who is. Um, trying to control her is not her brain but instead it's her heart now yung puso na lang niya yung pagmamahal niya sa, sa kanyang dalawang anak yun na yung mismo nakukotoro kay Sisa and you know um, in a time like that kailangan mo talaga ng utak um, you need to blend well in that environment pero yun, yun nga kaya siya nabaliw puso na lang yung nakukotoro sa kanya right and it's just really sad na she's had to, to go through that process okay iso na naman ni the, the intro, introvert parang unti-unti ka na ng jasmine napupunta sa nori may abaniko at lam pala na sa tabi <laughs> okay so so abaniko pala tawag dito kaya kala ko pa may pail lang pero okay abaniko <laughs> ayaw nga eh huwag na kayo magulat ha kapag i-open ko maging gawa sa bamboo na pati. <laughs> so, alam mo ni Beth Dizzo, nalungkot ako, sobrang iya ko dito, ang kusay na lahat. You are right. Oh my God, you you, um, you, you, you are right. Um, the entire crew, so far, are very well casted. Um, especially kay Binibiling Andrea Torres, pati and also kay Clyde. Balbe pa rin sa Isunod naman ni Enzo Lorenzo. Ramdam ko yung tense ni Paldes Salvi habang ininitrikit. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm trying to... That's what I'm trying to tell um, tell you guys. Because of that scene, it made Paldes Salvi more human. Even though he is a shitty human being, we can see na pinapagpawisan siya, kinakabahan din, kasi siya lang tao. Demonyo man siya, pero... Isa din siya mortal being, right? <laughs> okay. Isa lang naman ni The Crisping Room. I agree. They took their time to shot si sa alone six minutes monologue. Sometimes ang ganyang kahabang scene ay very dragging and nakatamad panoorin. Pero Andrea Torres makes us watch her and put our eye on her for that six minutes. Nakatch niya ang puso mo. Yeah, you, you, you're right about that, Crispin. Um, Crispy pala. <laughs> you're right about that, Crispy Room. And... You know, I I also wanted to give kudos to the to the director and then to the cinematographer, yung managa handed din ng, light, ng lighting, because that was a really well shot scene. Not only na nakikita mo yung performance ni Andrea, 
Yung binibigyan ng Andrea Torres para nakita mo din yung set design na ginawa nila, right? Just like I said on that episode, si, uh, si Sisa ay isang nanay. Pero, yung transformation niya ay nangyara sa mismo, kung hindi loob ng bahay, kundi sa labas din ng bahay niya mismo, right? And you know, kilala natin ang mga nanay bilang yung ilaw ng tahanan and the fact na they shot that scene na madilim, wala na yung ilaw sa kanyang bahay, wala na yung wala na yung kandila doon, wala na yung lampara doon, it shows na you know, darkness means the death of a character. And the Sisa character na should, should we say na, na normal, yung matino, yung nasa tamang pag-iisip ay namatay na. And thus, pinanganak ni Reborn si Sisa kung saan yung puso na lang nagkukontrol sa kanya, kung saan hindi na siya nanay sa kanyang pagtingin. patay ni pagkananay niya dahil patay ni ilaw sa uh, sa tahanan and she's just a regular human being na nabaliw na who wanders around the the city di ba and yeah it's going to be that thing for the next uh, following episodes yeah but you're right um you're right about that Chris Pulum okay this is Uh, written by Julius Christopher this is why I watch your reaction videos you are reading between the lines I like your analysis on the season scene ang ina ang ilaw na tahanan and they shot the scene sa dilim walang ilaw walang kandila kudos Sir Jasper thank you so much for that um, Julius Christopher and yeah um, I like to do analysis on everything um, gusto kong Gusto magbago yung tingin natin po natin sa Philippine media, Filipino media kasi I know we need to support local and everything like that. There are some shitty shows and shitty movies na galing sa Pilipinas pero there's also a lot of Filipino content here na talagang it deserves like a worldwide praise, like a worldwide viewership. It's good to see na may naninig ako na may sikat tumatresel na to sa Africa, which is okay. Sa Africa mismo, sikat siya. And sa other places sa mundo. Pero I like to do analysis because it really shows na um, hindi lang natin nakikita yung, ano, yung peak of the iceberg. Right? Peak of the iceberg of Filipino media. Pero under the iceberg, there's also a lot of stories to tell about each scenes, about each frame, about each performance. Kaya I can say a lot of stuff about episode kasi about episode is just, is just um, conversation worthy. There's a lot to tell about the episode kahit man araw-araw to. Um, but yeah, um... It's one thing to watch a show. It's another thing to talk about a show, right? Diba? And it's one thing to watch an episode. After that, after 30 minutes, okay, you can move on with your life. But it's another thing to talk about an episode and have a discussion with um, like-minded people because we simply love the show itself. We simply like, like the episode. And there's just a lot of meaning behind each lines. There's a lot of meaning behind um, each scenes, each frame. And yeah. Um, kaya I am really surprised na whenever you guys leave comments nagugulat din ako na oh okay may nag-comment ng ganito hindi ko nakita yun ha? hindi ko napansin yun na sabi oh tama ka nga no itong episode to may isa nagsisisi ako oh my god hindi ko to na mention sa post discussion ko hindi ko na mention ito 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 pero you guys also saw that and I like seeing that because not just like I said this is like a classroom at natututo tayo we are sharing knowledge with, with each other diba so that's really good to know Thank you for writing that in, Julius Christopher. Okay. May sipo na bang lahat for last night's episode? Grabe ka, Andrew. Ngayon, binago mo. Yeah, but ito mo talaga marami umiyak sa episode na to. Not me. Uh, may rapa ko pa iyakin. Um, but that, that's just me. That doesn't mean that I don't appreciate the the scene or something like that. May rapa na pa iyakin. Pero I do feel it. I feel the emotion that Andrea... Um, was portraying and yeah isunod naman ni Mars Ailey grabe ilang beses na kung umiyak sa sinisi sa character lang sila sa novel pero ba't ang sakit-sakit yeah I think merong tinatawag na ano eh 
nalimutan ko anong tawag doon pero you know people like to follow celebrities they like to fl- follow vloggers ba? Diba? even though those vloggers don't know you personally you like watching them you support them kasi they're like your internet friends or something like that may, may, may tawag sa relationship na gano'n hindi ko lang alam but it's the same thing with characters sa story while they are fictional if a character is well written you can feel the context about their lives you can yun, parang alam nyo na yung backstory nila by just seeing how they act by just listening to how they talk ba? Diba? and even though fictional characters lang yung mga characters na nolimitang nga eh, in real life nakakalungkot yung mga pinagdadaanan nila kasi nakikita natin sarili natin sa kanilang mga din, pinagdadaanas ba? Diba? while hindi naman tayo dumaan sa face na naging baliw tayo right nakikita naman natin ramdam natin yung feeling na mawawalan ka ng anak kung hindi ka mawawalan ng anak yung isa nawala yung isa naman yung isa naglayas yung isa naman namatay and based sa mga nakikita natin sa buong mundo it's it's a really hard thing to to handle diba it's a, it's a really hard thing to face that's why whenever that thing happens iniisip na oh my god sana hindi mangyari sa akin to ganyan ganyan and yeah that's why the characters in No Limit Angari works and in this show works kasi they were written from a uh, that are very three dimensional there's a lot of sides about their character there's a lot of bad and good sides and they are basically human beings they 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 don't exist in real life but they are human beings nonetheless and we are human beings and that's why nakita natin sa natin sa kanila okay so the prefet say ganda po ng confession scene in the client father salvi nakabilib po yung mga tapang ni Claire yeah Yeah, I mean, you're right about that, Fed. Um, that's why I like the clay character. Sobrang tapang niya. I wouldn't do that. Kapag nandiyan sa mundo na yan, I wouldn't do something like that. That's just a very stupid thing to do. But hey, clay is a strong character. And basically, she has a lot of surprises um, hidden under, under her sleeves. And I'm just really curious to know what she is going to do next on the next coming episodes. That's why we like watching Maria Clara de Barbie because Clay, the character Clay, is very intriguing, right? Hindi lang siya mabait, hindi lang siya strong, pero again, she has a lot of surprises sa atin. All right, is it the Blue Archer? Thank you, um, Jasper, for your reaction. All I can say is that Andrea Tos really did an amazing performance na payak ako. Yeah, ako din na uh, well di na payak pero. I was really impressed with her performance here. Um, sinabi ko na she was very well casted. It feels like she was born to play the Sisa role. Um, I can see other people playing Sisa, uh, Sisa too. Pero 100% hindi sila nakamali sa pagkakas para kay Andrea Torres para sa role na to. And she is performing it really, really well. Damang dama mo yung kanyang performance. Sila to maninig the amazing Noipi. Andrea Torres is such a um, remarkable art, um, actress. No words can describe uh, how brilliant she is. Asisa, kaka, believe talaga mo siya sa binuhos niya on the, on the scene. Sobrang tumatak talaga sa akin yan. Well done si Asisa. Bravo galing talaga ni Derek. Carmen Angel, hands down, all the cast. Yeah. Um, that's all. Basically, you said everything na I've been saying about that scene in the past few minutes basically it's simply an amazing scene um hopefully it's a scene that people will remember um in the future and i can see this show na babalik balik ng mga tao because this show is basically um no limit and people study no limit every year every semester so that's a good thing Um, if they want an accessible way to follow the story of Nolimitangre, they can just watch this show instead. And if they want to do an analysis of the Sisa character, then they can also watch this show instead. Because it's something to read. Uh, it's one thing to read 
a scene in the books but it's also one thing to see it to see it diba um in video form and hear the music the dialogue see the performance it's another thing and for me ano yung mas immersive of course mas immersive kapag nakikita mo siya in video form isa so, naman ni Theodore Ginochi and the actors act, uh, acting really changes our POV about Sakisisa laughing song yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right y- yung ngayon sabi ko um, basically there will be a new generation of people seeing the Sisa character as someone na di dapat siya pinagtatawanan di ba kasi It's all about mental illness. What I love about this this generation is that we are more open about those stuff. We are more open about the idea that fat shaming is bad. The idea that you can come out and be f- and feel free um, being a part of the LGBT community. And at the same time, if you have mental problems, then it's fine to talk about it. And it's fine to um, get help. Um, relating to it, right? Okay, so that's episode 23. Let's just go to episode 24. One hour and 10 minutes. Tired. I think on the previous... Um, good! Contiling comments dito. This is good. Alright. Isa naman ni Telma Buscano na matay po si Sisa. Okay, so tinanong ko kasi dito kung ano nangyari sa kay Sisa sa libro. Right? And spoiler alert na lang. Okay, spoiler alert sa mga dinakabasa ng libro. Pero yeah, um, tinanong ko na nangyari si Sisa sa libro. Okay, sabi ni Telman na matay po si Sisa. Nakita po sila ni Basilio. Okay? Sa lupain ng mga ibaras, sinunog ni Basilio ang bangkay kasama ang bangkay ni Elias. Ayun na rin ang kagustuhan ni Elias. Okay. So sa mga dinakakalam si Elias yung isa sa mga karakter dito na hindi pa natin nakikita. I think we will see Elias around the mid-chapters of the book. And maybe, you know, Maybe next month, yata, ba, ba, makita natin si Elias sa show na to. Pero, si Elias is basically the Andres Bonifacio of this story. Yata. Pero yun, yun ang ramdang, alam, alam ko siya yung parang Andres Bonifacio dito sa story na to. Eh. Correct me if I'm wrong. Pero yeah, uh, okay. Um, that's good to know if mamatay si... I mean, that's not good to know. Pero tinatanong ko kasi kung ano mayayari kay Sisa. So, if na- namatay si Sisa, well, that's sad, of course. Okay. Um, so, ito naman ni... Gina- Ginalin Montalbo but na lang hindi ganun kabigat sa dibdib ngayon yeah yeah. this this episode is more a little bit more high, it's still heavy but it's a little bit more lighthearted compared to the past three episodes episode 23 is probably the heaviest pero yeah um, tama kayo dyan um, Genalin isunod naman ni Jen namatay si Sisa kasama ni Elia sa ending na nolimitang hari ng Pasko yun Hmm. Okay, sa Pasko pala yun. Okay. Next month. So, next month, makita natin si Elias or maybe this month. Magkasama silang sinunog ni Basilo, ang katawan, sa nobela, halos walang introduction si Mario Calaribara at hindi nakapokus na lang. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so another confirmation na namatay nga si Sisa by the end of the book. Pero, sinabi ko din na tinanong ko yata or sinabi ko din na walang masyadong interaction si Mario Clara at Ibarra. sa libro pero yeah basically this thing confirms it her com- um, Jen's comment confirms it na yeah um Normitangan is not like an entirely a love story between the two pero it's more like you know it's more about politics and the social cancer and stuff pero yeah um it, I mean, it, it, it makes sense na um tao dito Kasi nga, busy nga si Ibarra sa libro, di ba? Ang dami yung pinagagawa kaya hindi sila masyadong nakikita ni Maria Clara at Ibarra. But at the same time, yun yung, yung basically yung pinaka-unrealistic about about sa story na yun. Kasi if you guys are in LTR mode, then bakit minsan minsan ka lang papakita kay Maria Clara, di ba? Seven years kayo uh, mag-shota tapos minsan ka lang magpakita. But at least that thing was addressed in this show dahil si Maria Clara na napapakita kay Ibarra and at the same time kina-question ni Maria Clara kay Ibarra na oh bakit minsan ka na magpakita sa akin e eh, diba nga LDR tayo tapos kung kailan ka na sa Pilipinas tsaka lang magpapakita kapag gusto mo kapag free ka mga ganun ganun and yeah um, that's that's good to know isulot naman ni Judith Judith Nera ang naalala ko 
mamatay si Sisa at si Basilio ang magdilibig sa kanya. Yeah, um, that was confirmed earlier. Parang sa end part yata. Yep, you are right about that, Judith. Nakalungkot na hindi ko na naalala yung scene na yun. Isinuto mo na yung EXO Love EXO MC. 36 27 Haha, <laughs> the way you said it. Ha, tropa, tropa lang. <laughs> Ito yata yung part na sinabi ko na um uh, Saan ba ito? Sa scene yata ito ng ano yun. Ibarra, busy tayo mo naman yun. <laughs> ito yung sinabi ko mismo. Love yun. Ibarra, busy tayo mo naman yung shota mo. Ay, <laughs> okay. Ibarra, busy tayo mo naman yung shota mo. Go. Uwi-uwi ka ng pilis, tapos di ka may pagkita sa shota mo. Okay. So, ito naman ni Jen Herman. Seems there's a play on words na namin ali top top friend ali. Wow. Wow, okay, that's really good to know. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Tama nga, ali nga, alay. Yeah. That's a very nice... Um, buti na nakita mo yun, Jen. That's, that, that, it's one of those things na talaga nagugulat na ako sa mga comedy. Kasi you guys have a point. Yung ali tap tap nga niya, kaya niya pala, kaya niya pala pinangalan ng alay. Or Ali, kasi it's based on allies, based on alliances. Nice catch, Jen. Nice catch. Okay, it's rather the Blue Archer. Clay's Chancy attitude is really being shown here. Haha, <laughs> no more comment. By, by the way, Barry Fortes, I'm Julian Sanos and Juan Cotrivino were nominated for the roles. Oh, really? Oh, wow. We're nominated for the roles in Mane Clara Tibara at Tag Reward in Chicago. Kudos. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't want to tag awards in 2022. Well, if that is the case, then that's awesome then. Oh. Okay. Okay, so you're going to that. Hindi ko alam yung tag awards na yan, TAG awards. Pero, given the fact that these three were nominated um, para sa role nila sa isang awards thing, awards show or awards ceremony or something, that is really good to know. And the fact na nasa America pa to, this is good because it it only, kinakarat lang nito yung ano, yung lumalawak lang yung yung Filipino media representation pagdating sa iba't ibang bansa, especially in the US. I've been always arguing about na kulang sa Filipino representation pagdating sa Hollywood. I do think na Filipino representation is important kasi I want my children to see themselves on TV given na Western media is like what? Like maybe 80% of, of the time na nakikita natin sa TV and sa computers natin. And I just wanted to see more Filipinos in the big screen, in the silver screen. Spider-Man No Way Home did very well about that. Pinakita na yung ano yung family side ni ni oh my god, nalimot ko yung pan ni, ni yung karakter ni, ni Jacob Batalon, di ba? Yung kasama yung lola niya. Pero yeah, this is good to know. At least it will spread awareness about Filipino talent, and it will also spread awareness about this Filipino show right here. And yeah, thank you for sharing the Blue Archer. Hindi ko alam na they were nominated. I hope they win. But you know, everything is very competitive right now. But no, a nomination is more than enough. And this is really good. Um, a good way to spread awareness about Filipino talent and skills. Okay, last episode. Last episode na tayo. Okay, good. Continuing comments. Okay. Isod ni Emilia Milagros Cuevas, alias pala kapatid ni Maine sa AMA. Kapatid ni Emilia. Ah, okay. Interesting. No, oh, sorry. Oof. Okay, Emilia. Um, thank you for sharing that. 
So I think what um, Emilio was saying is that si Elias, yung artista ni Elias ay mismong kapatid pala ni, ni Maine Mendoza sa, sa ama. That's interesting. That's really good to know. Um, di ko kilala yung artista ni Elias, pero hey, um, the, if this is like his first gig as uh, as an actor, well, good for him. Because hindi ako ano hindi ako yung isa sa mga all dub thing um di ako kasi hindi ako ng TV around that time na sumigat yung all dub pero I did so main Mendoza's performance sa isang show sa isang movie starring Vic Soto and Coco Martin sa Metro Manila Film Festival yata yung mapulis sila and main Mendoza was very her performance there was very good like um pumasok ako sa sinihan having low expectations kasi alam ko lang sa may bilang isang um dubber uh, nagda-dub sa Vine yata sa Vine or yung dating app yung parang dating TikTok nagda-dub-dub lang siya doon pero seeing her perform in in that movie was really astonishing because she wa- her performance exceeded my expectations about her and Yeah, I just um, I just hope that I will be able to see more of her roles, um, acting skills sa mga ibang mga movie. But yeah, that's really good to know that. Thank you so much for writing that in, Emilia. Henry Geniston Vlogs wrote hap, um, love things. Thank you so much for that. Dalisa and Alex wrote malamig ang klima noon. Walang production. Kaya yeah, sakto lang bote yung pagkakas sa pilay. At yung damit na okay lang. Okay, yeah, I think um I think you're right. I mean it, it was just like a hundred years ago, right? I mean I'm not sure how big of um Ugano kaba Ugano kakaiba yung klima noon. I'm not I'm not a science guy. So hey, if you're right, you're right. And that's really good to know then. Thank you so much for writing that in Daddy San Alex. D third Petilio wrote Ayasama Ojumu but Ayos na. Yeah. I ito yung nagsabi yata ng ano. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Siya yata yung nagsabi na pulong mo yan. Lang sabi ko. <laughs> yan, ayos ko na. Um, thank you so much for that. Third. I need comments like this para mapaganda ko lalo yung video for you guys. Isa na ni Jane Advincula. Yung sinasabi ng emosyon ni Sisa para sa asawa niya. Gusto niya sabihin sa asawa niya. Um, like sa asawa niya, yung emosyon na yun. I guess, yata. I'm not sure. Kasi parang damdam ko, parang wala naman siyang pakialam. I mean, I think may pakialam siya sa asawa niya, pero lahat, yung buong puso niya ay para sa kanyang dalawang mga anak eh. I think she could, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Hindi ko pa alam yung, I think we didn't get enough of screen time between Sisa and sa asawa niya para masabi natin na talagang sobrang mahal ni Sisin kanyang asawa pero if that's what you think then that's what you think um, para sa akin yung lahat ng emosyon na nagkagaling kay Sisa ay para talaga sa kanyang dalawang maanak or unless mali ang pagkakaintindi ko sa comment mo pero thanks for writing that in Jay Pansinin Fidel Mariano Pakitulungan si Binibini Clay. Mariano, okay. Ay, wait! English na din ang alala, hindi Fidel. Oh? Ganun ba? Interesting. Um, okay. Kailangan ko ito panoorin ito mamaya o natin ako itong scene to. Pero if that's the case, then interesting. Um, maybe tinuturuan ni Fidel kung paano mag-English yung kanyang um, ang kanyang alalay or maybe isang isang mali lang yun na na nagawa nila kasi nga di ba um, hindi uso yung English during that time unless yung salatang okay ay uso na di ba pero okay I mean okay okay that's really um, interesting to know a one thank you for pointing that out Isunod naman ni Jom Avents. Malamig ang tubig sa ilog. Iyon ang kanilang ginagamit. Ilalagay sa mayroong timba. 
yeah, that makes sense now. Um, Jam, I didn't comment ako doon. Thank you so much for leaving that comment. I think it makes sense, yeah. Maglagay ka nga naman namin yung tubig sa bakal. Lumalamig yung bakal, diba? And kung lumamig yung ano. You're right, you're right. That's that's a very interesting technolo- technological thing in the past, though. Okay, so naman ni Julie, Julie say, gusto ko yung reaction mong shit bitin. <laughs> yeah. Um, tinatry kong iwasan magmura. Pero, wala, kapag bitin, bitin eh. Diba, mapapamura ka talaga. Thank you so much for writing that in, Julie. Isulot naman ni Jerry Ramos. I guess kasi store bottle lang wine kaya lumalamig yung bawal kasi maanawan yung wine. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I think napat, ang tinanong ko din kung paano nila napapalamig yung ano eh. Kasi you can store anything, pero hindi siya lalamig kung mainit yung klima sa labas, diba? Pero gaya nga nasabi ni ni Job na malamig daw kasi yung tubig sa ilog. So, I'm assuming na yung baka na yun, ipapasok nila sa ilog para lumamig. Hindi ko pa alam yung, kung paano yung construction sa parang ganung bagay na yun. o oh, paano how that thing works pero yeah okay isa na ni Randall Tabora I agree with you po as much as I don't want to admit it this version enhanced and improved the original story of Nori at first I was skeptical pa papa nagkakwento ang story ni Maria Clara at Ibarra kasi nga sa libro ang unti na interaction nila okay Wala rin masyadong connection si Basilio at Crisos sa mga ibara bago sila magkita ng the last few chapters na Noli. Pero lahat yon napunan dito sa verso na to. This is indeed an expansion of the story, not an alteration. Okay? Napaganda na story na yun. Sana masustain ang Jimmy hanggang dulo. Yeah! You are completely right about uh, about that, Randall. Alam, um, um, just recently nga lang sanabi ko na this version is probably a more enhanced and improved version of the original Noli Mitangar story. Kasi they are adding a lot of interactions here that is going to be very significant in the later chapters of the book and also in the next book. And yeah, I just like um, how everything is being told here. And uh, again, if you guys want a superior version of Nonime Tangere and probably El Filipo Serismo, I think it's better to read, I mean watch this show instead. Right, pero at the same time, you can also never go wrong with reading the book. Kasi yung book na yun yun ang literal na nanggaling sa utak ni Jose Rizal, right? Uh, without any alterations and stuff, that is the original thing, ba? Diba? Um, and yeah, um, that's my that's my uh, opinion about it. Is it about the Megami Inoue? Crap, bitin, amazing. I had a busy week, so I had to watch all the episodes back to back. Okay, the busy one was emotional, full ups and I can agree with the bara. Clay has been too forward and not thinking rationally with the action in the past episode. But then again, I understand why her character is like that. Especially the morning, but but just because we are strong, the pendy woman, we can't be reckless and ignore rationality with our actions. We first sometimes need to fix properly and rationalize ourselves so that we may not be and complicate the others upon doing so. Luckily, Fidel came to the rescue. A big pogi points for me. I still kind of had a mixed feeling with Clyde's action this week. Yep. Love her scenes when she was helping and sad about confronting her. Father Salvahi. <laughs> Salvahi. I like that. And arguing with Ibarra. I do understand why she's like that, but her actions can cause dark consequences and negative stuff to other people around her. To be exact, it's actually her that is acting a bit selfish, not Ibarra. Yeah, you're right. Hopefully, she will realize the mistakes. Yeah, um, that's why I really love um, the characters here. Because just like I said earlier, na lahat ng characters dito ay hindi are... hindi lagi hindi lagi tama ang choices nila at hindi lagi mali ang mga choices nila they have a good side they have a bad side um, Clay has done several several stupid things na just like I said I wouldn't do if ever I'm in her shoes but at the same time it's kind of justifiable kasi it's justified kasi nga 
if you try to look at the context and where she is coming from, then you can understand her actions. You can understand her actions, but that doesn't mean that uh, you have to agree with her actions. Right? Same thing with Ibarra. You know, Ibarra is a good person. Right? But at the same time, he madali siya magalit. Oh shit, but parang lumindol na naman. Parang lumindol na naman ah. Oh, this is like my second time experiencing a lindol while recording. Usually, may lumalabas dito ng ano eh. Kapag lumindol eh. Alright, baka nahilo lang ako. Pero yeah, um, Ibarra can be a good person pero at the same time, nakikita natin na madali siya magalit. And, you know, wala siyang time para kayo mareklara, ba? Diba? Kasi he's just really busy helping other people and trying to fulfill his father's dreams. Pero the wrong thing about it is that wala siyang time para makipagkita kay Maria Clara which is his girlfriend na shot on for like 7 years. Pero again, we can understand we can understand kung bakit siya busy. And that's what makes these characters very three-dimensional because uh, you know, you can't simply do everything that is good that is good for everyone without having to do some without having to sacrifice some things right so yeah you're right about Jet Megami I completely agree with you sila naman ito hindi ko siya mabasa sorry sa tingin ko ma-realize ni Clyde sa next episode na si Piddle ay wala talaga sa mga characters no doon kasi mo lang pagiging curious niya about kay Piddle probably but at the same time din naman um nabasa lang naman ni Clyde yung first few chapters ng Nori Metangare and um, there's a huge chance na hindi alam ni Clay ang buong character list ng Norimi Tangere. She might just assume na si Fidel ay isa sa mga characters pero hey, there's also a chance na hindi kilala ni Clay si um, hindi kilala ni Clay si sino to? There's a huge chance na hindi din kilala ni Clay si my god, nalalimuto ko yung Ay, hindi, hindi kilala ni Clay si Elias, di ba? Kasi si Elias nagpakita sa mga middle chapters eh. Right? So, so, from my perspective, hindi alam ni Clay ang buong characters na Noli Mitangare. Ang alam lang niya si Christos na may bala kasi you know, si Kat, of course, si Mania Clara, si Sisa, pati yung dalawa, dalawa niya mga anak, pati yung dalawang pare. But I think sa mga other, other characters which are kind of minor, yeah, hindi na niya kilala. So, I'm, I will just assume na Sa perspective ni Clay, si Fidel ay isang karakter sa non mitang And yeah. And who knows, maybe eh, dito sa mundong to, maybe sa version ng non mitang dito, maybe Rizal wrote a Fidel character sa story na to. Diba? Maybe lang. Maybe alternate universe to. In an alternate universe, there's a Fidel character in the non mitang story. Pero yeah. Isa lang naman yung Primo Yulo. Nice reaction, sir. May, con- uh, may you continue reacting. I will continue reacting. Thank you so much, Primo. Uh, Mikai, it's a masterpiece. Which is a reaction with a fresh point of view. You, you got- oh, thank you so much, uh, Primo. I really appreciate your comment. Yeah. Um, masterpiece. Papunta na daw. Papunta na. I, I, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece yet. Kasi um, di ko pa nakikita yung buong show. Di ba? Who knows, maybe in the next coming episodes, puro basura na ipapakita nila. Pero I doubt it. Um, pero I can see why you're already te- um, um, telling us that this is a masterpiece. Because so far, everything is nothing but quality. Everything is nothing but good storytelling, good cinematography, good framing. Everything is... Pagdating sa expectations mo sa isang teleserye, this is way... Way, uh, parang malaki talaga yung budget dito talagang pinag-isipan talaga nila yung, my, yung my, uh, minute details lahat ng dito yung costume design yung set design talagang pinag na nila to yung quality nito para sa isang teleseda is like movie quality and yeah thank you so much for that primo and finally feds say 
good thing po in-apply ni Clay ang pagiging nursing student niya para malagaan si Sisa. My week is complete na po. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Fed Say, for another comment. And yeah, it's really good to see um, Clay's skills bilang isang nurse in scenes like this because um, <laughs> kung, to- uh, kung tutusin, um, um, sa mga kababaihan dyan, siya lang, si Clay lang yata yung nag-iisang babae na marunong mag-handle ng medical stuff, di ba? Kasi pinag-aralan niya talaga yan. Pero it's like, it's interesting to see, it's really good to see na, you know, Clay is not there to just, um, to just spectate, pero you know, if kailangan niya tumulong ng tao, tutulungan niya talaga. And to the fact na willing pa niya talaga gamutin si Sisa, alagaan, dinisin yung paa, and stuff like that. It really expands her character. It really expands her humanity and uh, it makes me want to feel um, I want to care more for the Clay character. And yeah, that's my replies to all of your comments. Um, thank you so much for leaving me, uh, for leaving a comment like this. Uh, we have a very active community here and I really appreciate you guys spending time with me um, watching the episodes. See you guys next week. For the, for the next set of episodes and yeah under 12 under 12 hours we will be reacting to episode 26 of Mane Clara Tibala and at least for this Monday I'm pretty sure sh- not, not pretty sure but I think I will be able to upload my reaction to the latest episode very early so see you guys around take care and goodbye